Module 10 Macros and Text So far in our Visual Basic course we've been telling you how to manipulate numbers. However occasionally you'll want to manipulate words as well. How do we do this? In front of you is a list of codes. Some begin with an A, some begin with a B. Very simply we want to sort this list into two separate lists without the comments such as new and old one list will have the A numbers, one will have the B numbers. We also want to remove duplicates from the list. OK, so I've created a very simple little loop here, which is going to go through the list removing duplicates. I've decided to use a do while loop. A for next loop with an if statement to escape would suffice as well. If we sort the list into order, then all duplicate data should appear next to each other, so we can just compare one row to the row above to determine if it needs to be deleted. Now I'm not expecting you to remember this line of code which tells you how to sort data. Instead you can get it back by just recording a new macro. But what I've said is to sort all the data from cells 14, which is D1, to 104, which is D100, off the bottom of the page and to sort them by column D in ascending order and without a heading. We can check that works by using F8. We can then create our do while loop which should say if cells row num plus one four equals cells row num four as in if the line below the current row is the same as the current row then delete the present cell. Note that if we delete the cell we want to keep row number the same the next time we go around the loop. However, if we leave the cell there, we will need to add one to the row we're looking at so we can analyze the next row of data. We also need to define a starting value of row num, which we can do and drag the arrow back to. So let's see if it works. We're now going to be in row 2, which is identical to row 3, so we expect to delete the cell. The cell gets deleted, so we can assume this macro works. However, we now see that B72 has been left in the spreadsheet. This isn't a fault with our macro. The problem is that B72 here has three characters and B72 here has a lot of spaces afterwards. Therefore, we need to learn the command to trim any spaces from the front or end of an entry. It is vba.trim and then you put the cell which you want to trim in the middle. So the contents of cells row num plus one four, i.e. the cell in the row ahead, should be trimmed, as should the contents of the cell we're currently in. Note that Excel is only trimming the cell for the purposes of the if statement, and that if we want to trim the cell anyway, we should also trim it if it's retained. If it seems fairly abstract, we can run the macro and see what happens to cell D1, which is A16 with a space in front. So we've said cell D1 equals the trimmed version of cell D1. And the space has disappeared. The inclusion of the trim statement in our if statement means the B72 duplicates will be removed. Note that the remaining B72 does not have spaces after the two. We're now going to look at subsplitter, which has to detect if entries have A's or B's and if they have comments on the end. So using the same loop as before we need a way of determining what the first character in any given cell is. This is done using the vba.left command where you specify the string as Excel tells you we now have to specify the row and column indices for our cell. Then you have to specify how many characters you want to take into account. So in this case we take the first character only. Just to demonstrate the different properties of text we'll invent left prop as a variable. We'll also invent len prop. Now this uses the vba.len command which tells you the length of the entry in any given cell. There is also the instring prop which will detect if a character is present within a cell. So you specify where you want to start in the text string, which in this case would be the first character. The string itself is cells row num 4. String 2, where well, we want to find A's, so we'd say A. Then we close the bracket and, and in string prop will be equal to the position of our character within the cell. 
If it's not present, the value is zero. For the sake of completion, I'll introduce you to midprop, which is vba.mid, and takes the middle of the string. So if we say the string is still cells row num4, we now want to start at the second character and take the number. You can specify a length, so you just take a middle section, or if you leave it blank, you will take all the right hand side of the string. Finally, we have right prop, which pretty much does the same as mid prop, except in this case, you don't define how many characters you want on the right by where they start, you simply say how many characters you want. So again, we'll say two. Remember the first cell is A16. So if we open the code window out and open a locals window, we can see what value all these properties take as we cycle through the code. Left prop is equal to A, as we've taken the first character of A16. Len prop is equal to 3, as there are three characters in A16. In string prop is equal to 1, because A is the first character in A16. Mid prop is equal to 16. Note it's in inverted commas because it isn't a value, it's a text string. And right prop is also equal to 16. And so we can continue. Using a combination of these functions, you should be able to carry out any text manipulations you need to. So the first thing we want to do to each cell is to work out if they've got a comment. That can be done by finding out if they have a space. So if vba.instring from the start of the specified cell has a space which you can indicate as two parentheses with a space in between. If that isn't equal to zero then that means there's a space in the entry. In fact it means there's a comment we want to trim. The way in which we want to trim it is to take all the left hand side of the entry such as in D5 we want to retain the A5 but drop the new Therefore, we want to take vba.left of our string, and our length is actually equal to the position of the space minus 1, because we want to stop just before the space. Then we can set the cell equal to our function. As for whether we put it in column E or F, we'll have a col5 pos which will start equal to 1, and a col 6 pos, which will start equal to 1. Now, if the left character of the string is equal to A, then dump it in col 5. So, then we'd say cells col 5 pos, which is effectively the row into which we next want to enter data, 5 equals cells row num 4. We then need to add to call 5 pos to signify that the next cell's entry should go in the next available space. Else, we can say if VBA left of cells row num 4 equals B, then dump it in the adjoining column. Now, the loops themselves, although they may take some figuring out, aren't the important part of this exercise. The important part is that you understand that when we use VBA left, we're taking the left hand side of a cell. When we're using vba.instring, we're detecting whether a cell has a certain set of characters within it. And also, I hope you would be confident in using the length, mid, or right functions should the occasion demand it. So let's step through our macro line by line. Here it's found that A is indeed on the left hand side of A16. So the top cell in column E becomes A16. Call 5 pos is then added to. Unfortunately, we have forgotten to increment row num. So we'll do this at the end of our loop. At this stage, we can quit our macro and start again. This time, I'm just going to press play and we'll see if it runs happily to completion. There you go, we have sorted our data and we've got rid of the comments on A5 and A8.